Authority divine. Can I get a witness in this house? Amen. All right. Don't make me come after you over there. Jesus. All right. So we're going to give you a couple of definitions here. One is on authority, and we're going to talk about divine. All right. Authority is the power or the right to give others, to give orders, or to make decisions and to enforce, enforce obedience. The definition or the explanation, he had absolute authority over his subordinates. Okay, so when I pulled this up, I began to think about that. So what, what beca- according to the word of God, what becomes our subordinates? Come on, let's think with the, the mind of Christ. What becomes our subordinates? Not flesh and blood, but the principalities. Come on. And the powers, the rulers of darkness and the spiritual weaknesses that are in high places. Amen. They become subordinate to us because of God's authority that he has given us. All right. Hallelujah. The other explanation here is that it says they acted under the authority. Now, listen to this, please. They acted under the authority. And when I read this, the Holy Spirit downloaded God has given us, uh, God has placed his authority on us so we can act under the authority of the Holy Spirit. What he instructs us, right? When he speaks to us, when a vision comes, when a prophetic word is being released, we come under the authority of the Holy Spirit as believers to exercise and do what God is asking us to do. That's authority, all right? The second is a person or organization having power or control in a particular tip, uh, in a particular situation, uh, particular typically political or administrative sphere, organizational strategies of darkness. And so we understand that we God has given us authority over these organizations, and we're not going to go into a teaching on this right now. But when we come to understand the 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 application of God's word and that all things are parallel. We'll talk about that in the, in the realm of the spirit, the kingdoms of darkness, the principalities and powers, they have authority. They are skilled in what they do. They've been at this a long time. They are very well organized. But even in that, understand the authority or the uh, authority of divine gives us authority over the influences of the enemy. Amen? Authority also speaks about power, jurisdiction, command, control, mastery. It, it talks about dominance, or dominion, rule, uh, sovereignty. It talks about supremacy. It talks about dom, uh, uh, influence. And it talks about leverage um, and, and gives us clout. Amen? Authority also comes with the influence or the control, the leverage with weight and with power. We, we heard about this yesterday uh, with uh, Apostle Dave, weight uh, and, and the power of God. And it comes and it is recognized as a position with rank, with structure. It follows itself with trust and with faith. Yes, faith is Power, supernatural power. Faith is authority, supernatural authority, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We want to give you a definition of of divine. Divine means that which is of God or from God. And again, we're talking about authority, divine, the authority that comes from the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? So tonight, what God wants to do, he wants to raise our level, our consciousness to the progression of what Holy Spirit is advancing the body of Christ in. This encompasses the arena within the realm of the Spirit. Now, we've talked about this before, saints, that all truth is parallel. Let's get this deeper. You're going to hear this as long as we're here on this earth and we're ministering from Genesis. You're going to hear us repeat this over and over and over again, that all Truth is parallel. The things that are taking place in the natural realm are being organized first in the spiritual realm. Amen? So we talk about all truth is parallel, and we want to talk about the concept of God with his blessings, that the blessings of God that are there, they are both in the natural realm and in the spirit. So I want to give you a a description here that's based on the word of God. This This is the apostle John, 
and he's writing a letter to his dear friend Gaius, all right, his, his, um, his beloved brother in the faith. And this is what he writes to him. And you've heard us release this before. Get this deep in your spirit tonight. This was his request. This was his prophetic prayer. John says to the Gaius, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prosper. And when he was releasing this word, if you do a study on this, that was exactly what he was talking about, that he would prosper in all things, not in some things, that he would prosper in the, the blessings, the spiritual realm uh, uh, where God's blessings come, but also in the natural realm. My question to here today would be that, not my question, here is a question for you today. If such blessings that John prophesied or spoke into Gaius, excuse me, if such blessings are the will of God for one man Gaius, then they are for all men alike who have faith for them because in the gospel, God, he's no respecter of persons. God, is, God will use in whom he chooses to use. And God has called you. He's chosen you to be used by him. So we talk about the prosperity, the blessings of God that are God's will. And so we want to break this down for you to understand this Authority that is divine follows the, the pattern. It is a priority of over all things that God uh, bestows upon our lives. And so we're talking about the will of God. Uh, you might want to write this down. In the material blessings, it's recorded in Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. In Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Now, these are the material blessings that are the promises of God that uh, we would prosper in. In Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11, and in John chapter 15, verse 7, and in Philippians 4, verses 19. Now, there were probably another 12 scriptures in reference to material blessings that God bestows upon us to prosper in. Now I want to step into the area here of body, healing, and health. How many know God wants us to prosper in our bodies? Now I know I would say, everyone, this is not a negative thing, but I know everybody here, some way or another, sometime in your life, you've been hit by an assignment of the enemy to come against your physical body. Can I get a witness? But look where you are today. Can I give praise to God? Come on. So body healing and in health in Exodus 15, 26. We read that also in the entirety of Psalms 91. It's all in there. Body healing and health in Matthew 8, verse 17. And in 1 Peter 2, 24, which aligns itself with Isaiah 53, 5. And in James 5, 14. All inclusive, all prepared for us by God that we would prosper in our body, our healing and our health. Amen? Now we turn to the next example here, which is soul, the soul of salvation. In Romans 1, 16, and in Romans 10, 9, 10. You're all familiar with that verse? Because in order to receive salvation, according to that verse, you have to make that confession. Then also in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, and in Hebrews 7, 5. Saints, all inclusive and all paralleled and provided to authority that is divine. Somebody say authority divine. Authority. Come on. Say it like Jesus is in the room. Authority divine. Wow, is that it? Okay, praise the Lord. Authority divine is in the house. Is in the house. Come on. Let's give you the example here. The body of Christ, God's ecclesia, his church saints. It has always been recognized as being the recipient of attack by the kingdoms of darkness, spiritually and physically. 
the areas of our soul, our will, our mind, and our emotions, our physical bodies, one-on-one and also corporately, we have experienced these attacks. But tonight, we're going to go deep. Somebody want to walk with me on this? I'm getting on the edge of the diving board because we're going to go deep into this area of authority divine. Now, we've been so blessed and what the Lord, I've been waiting on this. The Lord has been talking to Brother Michael about this, is begin to develop a curriculum on spiritual warfare as we step into 2021. So this is an introduction, and you don't hear, we haven't heard much, or maybe, well, I haven't heard much about spiritual warfare, the teaching on spiritual warfare, but we are in a very, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, one-on-one, and the, the the corporate, uh, the corporate body of Christ, it is in a very, very strategic place right now. Come on. A very, very strategic place. And we have got to be so fine-tuned to the voice of God so that when these things come our way, and we're not speaking negative, it's the reality. When things from, from the outside come our way, we'll be ready to stand in the authority of this authority that's divine and declare the word of God against the attacks that the enemy would try to bring against our lives, all right? I know this is not a popular subject, but get over it. So we need to acknowledge to understand the authority God has given us as one of his sons and daughters. Now, born again, spiritual tongue talking, and we, we operate and we do the church thing and we go out and we, we pray, we worship, and, and, and we intercede and we participate in, in the laying on the hands with an expect going to move in us and through us uh, to meet the needs of those individuals. There's an expectancy for that to happen, right? And as we said earlier, miracle signs and wonders, in order for those miracle signs and wonders to follow, you've got to believe God. I said, you got to believe God according to his word. Hallelujah. And so we mark this understanding too is that born again, spirit filled, we have been given authority divine or a divine authority by God to function and to operate in the earth's realm, seeing it first manifesting in the spiritual realm and to develop an accuracy to the Holy Spirit that when he begins to speak to us, we know his voice and we move on what he's asking us to do. Come on, it's more than just a a Monday night service or a Sunday afternoon service. It's more than just another uh, uh, live stream from another ministry in another church. This is the activation. This is the production of what God is expecting to every believer to operate and function in, in his authority that is divine. In Mark 1, 27, now we're getting response. Uh, What's happening online? Are we getting thumbs up? If not, anyway, I'll do it. Thumbs up. All right. Mark 1, 27. Can I prophesy by reading the word of God into your life? Oh, my God. I said, can I borrow your Bible? He's so, Dave's so quick. He'll get it back. Hallelujah. Everything in this written word is prophetic. Every written word, amen, in the Bible is prophetic. And so when we understand that as we read the Word of God, it, 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 we read it in, in the realm of the, uh, the prophetic, but also as we speak it out of our mouth, it is a prophetic release with divine authority, or authority uh, 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 of divine being on that Word. Amen. Apostle Dave gave a powerful teaching yesterday. At the confessions out of our mouth. This is his passion. This is, his, this is what God has put in him. It's the... Um, how can I say, Marakosha. It's just call of God upon his life. Declaration, declaration, declaration out of your mouth. Every declaration should be a prophetic release coming out of your mouth with the expectancy that as you speak those words out of your mouth, you'll see them come to pass in your life. It is a firm foundation of everything that Jesus lived by. It was the oracles. It was the, the spiritual scrolls that were passed down to him as a man. From his heavenly father. When the Holy Spirit came upon him, there was an infilling. Come on. An impartation of knowledge and understanding of what the father was asking him to do. And no time where you can read in the gospels where Jesus refused refused to do what God asked him to do. He was obedient 100% of the time. Even to that point to where death on the cross. He said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Obedient unto death on the cross. Jesus never turned his back on the Father. He never turned his back on the disciples. He never turned his back. 
his back upon the lives of who he ministered to. He was always willing and ready, uh, ready and willing to declare the word of God, to speak prophetically, and to act in a prophetic act. Come on, the blessing, the two fish and the five loaves. My God, I'm going crazy up here. My God, hallelujah. Everything that God did, he did for kingdom purpose, for his kingdom people. Mark 1, 27, and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commands he even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. New doctrine? Did they cast out devils in the Old Testament? I don't recall reading that. But we see, see them getting, uh, people getting delivered from those spirits. Amen? Luke 4, 36. And they were all amazed and spoke amongst themselves, saying, what a word is this? For with exousia. Three people responded. For with exousia, authority. And power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. What's going on? What's going on? Jesus is operating in the authority of the divine, in the authority of his Father. He's commanding those spirits to come out, and they're leaving. And so those that are, are talking among themselves, we've never seen such a thing like this. We've never heard such a thing like this. What is this new doctrine? It wasn't new. It was with God from the very beginning. It's now just beginning to manifest through the life of his son. He's revealing. Oh, my God. Here we go. Woo, he's revealing. He brought heaven into the earth. Jesus brought the kingdom of heaven into the earth with a demonstration of power. And demons are coming out. Luke 9, 1. Oh, God, I'm spitting up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. Power. He gave them exousia and authority over all devils and to cure diseases of somebody in this house. This is authority divine. This is the authority divine put in the lives of God's people. What are you going to believe? Because if you limit yourself in believing what God says his word will do, then you limit God from operating and moving through you. Matthew 28, 19. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Power, exousia. What constitutes and combines this word, uh, word exousia? We need to go to the word of God. Power, exousia. It is the ability. Somebody help me. It is the ability. It is, watch this, a privilege. My God. It is a privilege. It's a force. It's a token of control, somebody. It's delegated authority, assigned and entrusted authority, given to us by God. It's the influence. It's the impact. It's the, the leverage of power, God's power over the power of the kingdoms of darkness and their kings. God reveals this. And to his, his disciples before he leaves. After all that he said and all that Jesus did on the earth. What he taught. Uh, what he gave as an example. It's now his time to depart. But before he leaves. He presents to his disciples. What's called the great commission. Is anybody familiar? Amen. And what does he tell him? He says. Go ye therefore, um, Matthew 28, I think it's 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Oh my God. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them. See, this is authority divine that God gives you the ability to teach. Come on, to baptize, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, get it, hear this. He says, lo, hey, guys, I am with you always. And we're paraphrasing. 
always I'm with you. And in all ways, even unto the ends of the world. Authority divine. God's authority. Now, I'm going to interrupt this presentation because, and this is not to boast in anything except Jesus Christ and whom crucified. There's an anointing. I, I feel the, the, um, the kabod, the weight of God's glory on these hands. So you guys are going to get it tonight. God is going to get you good tonight. Shika rebos sereke. In Matthew chapter 11, 11. My God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, this is the whole focus on the authority divine or God's divine authority in our lives. We're stepping in. We've stepped into 2021. God's alerting our spiritual ears to hear what's taking place in the spiritual realm. Not so much, well, in addition to what's coming out uh, of the mouths of his servants. Our ears are being fine-tuned to the voice of God, to the sounds that are taking place in the spiritual realm. Is somebody in this house? Yeah. And so we're, we're tapping into this tonight. And this will be a progression, I believe, in the next weeks to come. Verse 12 of Matthew 11. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. We're going to break this down in a teaching. The days that the Bible are referring here to is explained it includes John's ministry. Now, let's hold on to this. Proving that he was, was as much in the kingdom of heaven as Christ and to all others who proclaimed it. Now, watch this. The word suffers in verse 12 is the word baos. And it means to use force or to force one's way into a thing. Here's the idea. It explains itself by saying that before John the Baptist, the kingdom of God could only be viewed in the light of prophecy. Hear this. And you, you, the Spirit of God, will, he'll elaborate this with you during the week. Now hear this. But now that it was preached, men, they were pressing into it with an adore, a zeal. And tonight, I know that God is going to put his zeal upon you and bring his zeal within you. A zeal, a passion, an intensity, um, a, a devotion. Let's see, a devotion and a dedication. A passion resembling violence or desperation that appear as if they would seize it by force. This development of entering into this spiritual warfare concept has got to be one sanctioned by God, led by the Spirit of God, inspired by the Spirit of God. And in the same way that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane in that 11th hour where he prayed and prayed and prayed. And the Bible says that he prayed with such intensity, such zeal, such passion that his, that his blood, uh, his sweat turned into blood. And that is... That is uh, proven uh, medically, that a person becomes under such, such anxiety, vessels in their brain would break and, 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 and the blood would come forth in, 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 in the sweat. So hear this. This expresses the earnest that men have to have in getting rid of sin. Come on. All satanic powers, Amen. the world, and standing true with flesh and blood, and anyone uh, that would be with them. It's this, this passion, desire, asking God, rid me, pull out the dross in my life, 
Get rid of the stuff that has become an influence. The things that are holding me back from advancing your kingdom in the earth. From advancing me from stepping forward in a place of spiritual maturity to become active in the things that that God is asking us to become active in. So how did they press into them? To God's word. To God's authority that is divine. So I've got a question. We have questions here tonight. Has God's authority changed for the life of believer? Absolutely not. If it hasn't changed, why all the conflict? Why the confusion? Why the same continual struggle of being set free from the lies of bondage or from the strongholds of deception? Come on, let's get real. From the attacks and the influences of the enemy that try their best to surround us. See, when the The Bible tells us that when the Sadducees came to Jesus to argue that there was no resurrection, uh, it came uh, with, Jesus came with an explanation. You can read it in Mark 12, verses 18 through 24. I'm not going to do your homework for you. And his explanation was that if they knew the scriptures, Pastor Fred, if they knew the scriptures, come on, then they would understand The power of God. When we understand the scriptures, this divine order, this divine, uh, this authority that is divine, when we understand the scriptures, we know the scriptures, not just reading another word, but get the revelation of the scriptures, then we have the power to proceed and to move forward with the understanding that it is God's power in us operating through us for kingdom purposes on this earth. Mark 12, 24. And Jesus answered uh, and said unto them, Do you not therefore error because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? Tonight we're going to release a prophecy. We want to give you this prophetic word from the heart of the Father. And this is all scripture. It's all prophetic. It's all the heart of the Father uh, bringing us into an introduction of what he's asking us to step to in this year 2021. This is God's heart speaking to you tonight. Those of you online, get a hold of this. Wow. Hallelujah. The visions are coming here. Okay. Stay stay focused here. I got to tell you, there's angels here. There's angels in the sanctuary. I see big angel, a big angel here. I see a big, in the spirit, I see a big angel here. And their wingspan, the arch of their wings are huge. And I see, I see them moving in this direction. I, I believe we're going to find uh, feathers on this floor tonight in Jesus' mighty name. All right. Oh, God. Yeah, that's why God calls us peculiar. He makes us peculiar. Come on, separate Here's the prophetic release. Today, I position myself in this house, and I have set myself to become a priority in your lives. There's somebody here. I draw your attention to this word of authority divine that comes from my throne, which is my heart. As the days progress, you will experience a variety of activities that a manifesting that is manifesting from the realm of the spirit. I cannot deviate from this prophecy, but I'm going to ask the apostles, the prophets, the pastors and ministers of this house, be ready because a shift is taking place. Uh, As you're sitting there, ask God, there's an activation of the gifts of the spirit that are going to be uh, required for you to operate tonight in the sanctuary in Jesus' mind. Just a heads up. Just heads up. Because truly it is not about any man. My God. If, if we hear anything, it's, it, 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 actually it is. It's about one man. Jesus. The Christ. Amen. Amen. As the days progress, you will experience a variety of activities that is manifesting from the realm of the spirit. These manifestations are nothing but the attempts of the enemy to bring confusion 
discord, separation, and fear on the lives of my people. In his final desperate move to corrupt my bride, I have raised up a standard of excellence to you, my beloved, to release knowledge, to release understanding for the use of my authority against the enemy's attacks. For you to gain understanding that as you, my chosen, have been given divine authority, authority divine, to trample upon serpents. Somebody get in line with me. To trample upon serpents, upon scorpions, upon over all the power of the enemy. I am bringing you through stages of advancement to appropriately use my authority with wisdom and with understanding. As this war against the lives of my people intensify, I will supplement your lives with a greater increase of my anointing, says the Lord. With it will come the revelatory gift of wisdom and knowledge followed by confidence and assurance to exercise this divine authority. I will make your faces a flint, says the Lord. I will give you a spine of steel. I will raise your level of faith with expectancy and full understanding that what you ask me to do in my son's name, I will do it. You will loosen the shackles from the lives of my people. You will rebuke the spirit of fear to bind it with fetters and with chains. Excuse me. My God, the anointing in here is rich. As you submit yourselves unto me and resist the devil, he will flee. Step into the advancement of warfare practice. And as you are led by Holy Spirit, do exactly what he is asking you to do. Speak as he is asking you to speak. And you will be witnesses to this authority that is divine, my authority, that I have, I have given you. Oh, somebody get this in your spirit. The authority that I have given you to use to live and to function in kingdom authority, says the Lord. I am building a mighty army, an army of warriors who will be passionate, tenacious, individuals who have a zeal to operate at this level of warfare practice without fear. Everything you need to advance you, you will find in my word. Utilize the artillery for warfare combat. I received that word today from a mighty young woman of God who God is raising up uh, in, 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 uh, in his kingdom. We spoke today, and this word, when, when she gave it to me, it just resonated in my spirit. That's exactly what it is. God has given us artillery. artillery. Thank you for warfare combat. Use your spiritual language. Use worship as a weapon to war. Use and put into practice the gift of prophecy. Is somebody helping me out here? Use it as a mighty weapon, as a two-edged sword. Let the the effects of my word to be quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. As you do, you will see the dividing as under soul and spirit and the joint and the marrow. My word becoming the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of man's heart. As you do, you will see the days progress and the seasons develop with prosperity, says the Lord. You will see the necessity of my living word in you operating and functioning at a greater level of warfare practice. The key to walk through this season victoriously is to apply my word effectively to every situation to come against anything and everything that the enemy would put in front of your path, says the Lord of hosts. Can you receive that tonight? Harabosha. My God, there's a ringing in my head right now. Woo! Jesus. Shika fede priti baka. I hear the Yeah. I hear the song. I hear the songs of angels. There's a ringing in my brain. Holy. 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 Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. The earth 
I hear it. The earth is full of his glory. Shikavarabasaraka. Saints. Saints, the body of Christ has always been in a position of experiencing the onslaught, the strategies and the attacks, the assignments of the kingdoms of darkness. That has not changed. And it will continue until the return of the bridegroom for his bride. But tonight we've got a good word. I said we've got a good word. We have a sure word of prophecy. See, the Holy Spirit has always been very successful in all the years that he's been giving the freedom and liberty to operate through this ministry here at Genesis. This past year, 2020, and now into 2021, he's, he's been very successful in implementing the gifts of himself and producing the fruit of those gifts in the life of the believer. Just in this past 2020 and stepping into 2021, we've gained, uh, believers have gained knowledge in the, uh, in the uh, area of loyalties to God. We've come into an understanding of the council of consecration. We've come to an understanding of speaking and declaring the word of God out of our mouths. Come on. Come on. We're progressive. We're progressive in 2021. We've come to understand the necessity to believe God and his word. And we've gained the revelation of what it is to obtain the blessings of God. We've been taught how, about prophetic intervention. We've been given, we've been schooled with uh, abiding in his presence from Psalms 91. And we've examined the concepts of living in the kingdom of God and living a kingdom life. All this, saints, all this is inclusive and purposeful. For the believer to function. Every one of us to function and operate at a more mature and accelerate level of opportunity. So to summarize this, this topic, listen. The reader will become a witness to authoritative divine, authority divine throughout the Bible. And when you, if you take the responsibility of reading into this, you'll find it, you'll find it in Old Testament. You'll find it in New Testament. Authority divine or, or God's divine authority. We read it in the four Gospels. Jesus' life and his ministry. He was given authority divine. We see it in the opening of blind eyes. We see it where he fed the 5,000 on more than one occasion. We see this authority divine as he was baptized. Authority divine. Yes, you too, when you were baptized, received authority divine. We read it in the book of Acts in the early church and all that God said he was doing and he will continue to do. Tonight we're here in the sanctuary and the release of this concept of authority divine or God's uh, uh, divine authority operating in you and what he's placed on you for this, this development to increase and mature for kingdom purpose and kingdom life. Tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that which you're releasing in this house today, that which you've gathered this and assembled this people here for tonight in, in, in your son's name. And for those that are on live stream, that this word becomes an active work in our lives tonight, O oh God. To grasp the reality of divine authority or godly authority that you've given to us as your sons and daughters. I pray and ask tonight, Lord, as we move forward in this presentation, that the Holy Spirit come with the liberty to lead us and guide us into a truth that only he can reveal to us. And I pray and ask that there be such a, a tenacity, a passion, a, a desire, a zeal, and a love for more of what you're asking us to do. Amen. That as you equip us in this authority divine, the understanding will come. And that, Lord, in, in any, every given opportunity when we're out of our homes and we're out on the streets, we're in the marketplaces, uh, we're at uh, the, the gas pumps, wherever there's an opportunity, we would... Uh, we would recognize this authority that's divine and approach those who are in need to pray into the lives, to lay hands upon them, to exercise and execute this authority divine in their lives. 
and all this work that has been uh, revealed and established, it would draw souls into the kingdom of God. We ask, oh God, that priority of drawing souls into the kingdom of God. And Lord, that we would not look upon these men and women through our eyes, but we would look to uh, look unto them through, the, through your heart, oh God, to understand this is one of our brothers or sisters in the faith. This is one of your sons and daughters called uh, to be part of your kingdom. So tonight, Father, we ask you to release your blessing upon this house, this concept of prosperity, uh, not only in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm, in the material, in the t- material uh, areas of ma- the materialistic things, uh, Lord, the, the spiritual blessings, the gifts upon our lives. And as the days and the weeks and the months progress in 2021, we come with an expectancy as we release this word that the intervention of the Holy Spirit will find its way into each one of our souls, our will, our mind, our emotions. And that this concept of authority divine would become a reality in us and through us to build your kingdom in this earth. And to exercise that authority, even unto those who are in a backslidden condition, oh God. Whatever the reason, whatever the purpose, to the Jew, to the Gentile, to the man, to the woman. To the adult, to the child, whoever, oh God, that it would be. That this release would go forth with an understanding. And the capability that you've given us to operate in this authority that is divine. And all of God's people in this house say amen, 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 and amen.